Tomorrow on Daily Planet, suit up, we are diving deep for balloons, it appears. We'll see just what this suit can do tomorrow. Now, with Canada turning 150 years old, you'd think we'd already know what makes Canadians tick. Well, to find out scientifically, one Canadian company is looking into our brains while we watch TV. And Daily Planet, the TV show, had to watch that happen. Today, I'm at a place called Brain Sites, where 30 volunteers wearing brain trackers are watching Daily Planet. My goal, to see which of these snippets blow their minds. This is an EEG, or a portable electroencephalograph. It's got an electrode on the front, it sits and it measures your prefrontal lobe. Normally one of these devices would measure everything to do with your brain, but we're really only interested in the decision-making portion. For Dan Iwasa Maj, head of analysis, that's where our TV brains light up. We're able to take all of that, measure it at the two millisecond level, and then link it to what they're watching. And we get things like, when are you paying the most attention? What are you really emotionally connected with? And what do you encode to memory? All right, ladies and gents, Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Say so scale is important. We don't care and we don't really get anything important about any individual person. We get to know in aggregate. So how does a group of people feel about this? How do we make content better for everyone? Okay, so right now we are watching the brain waves of the people who are watching Daily Planet. On top of watching Canadian commercials, heritage minutes, movie trailers and political news segments, this focus group sees six shortened Daily Planet stories with a Canadian twist. There's a polar bear cub struggling in its first days of life. <coughs> creating vodka with water from an iceberg off Newfoundland. The installation of the Skywalk in Alberta. A tank truck rat rod from Ontario. A deep sea diving suit from British Columbia and a poutine eating competition. What piqued your attention? Um, I would have to say the poutine contest. <laughs> that got my attention too. I thought the one with the glacier was really cool. I didn't realize that there was a vodka that was made in Newfoundland. The tank, the uh, Franken tank, was it? That's now, that right. That looks cool. I'd say probably the biggest one was the poutine. Um, just the repulsive nature of it. The bridge, um, the one in Alberta, that I, I thought was super cool. Um, I think that would be really cool to, to go see, but I don't know if, I'm, it's probably gonna be the polar bear, as let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> polar bears. <laughs> polar bear. <laughs> baby polar bear was so adorable. Of course, they didn't know beforehand they were watching Daily Planet. So have you seen Daily Planet before? No, I haven't seen Daily Planet. Are you going to start watching it now? I might. I might. <laughs> <laughs> but will their opinions stand up to their brain waves? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. OK, so it's been a couple of days, and I am back here at Brain Sites with their CEO, Kevin Keen. So Kevin, I want to know, you've you know crunched all the numbers now. How did Daily Planet stack up? You guys actually did really well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Three of the top 10 clips that we showed them were Daily Planet clips. No way, that is fantastic. Yeah. Okay, can we see some of the results? Absolutely. And this is not fixed, by the way. This is absolutely true. It's a, it's a surprise to me, I didn't know. You're seeing their brain response to the polar bear cub. Okay. This ranked number two out of uh, the 25 clips that we show. So now explain to us what the lines mean. For sure, so we're looking at attention, connection, and encoding. Attention is, am I dialed into what's on screen or not? Connection is, is there a deeper emotional bond that's happening with the stimuli? And encoding is, am I writing that to memory? So attention is in yellow, connection is in pink, and encoding is in blue. Okay, so people are definitely focused right here. People right off the bat are connecting with the polar bears, obviously very cute. Cute. Uh, there's a moment here where they're concerned with the third polar bear cub, connections dropping, uh, and then that gets resolved when it, they're told that they're taken to the ICU. So really what you're seeing is sort of like the jigsaw puzzle pieces come together for the viewer. Totally. And at the moment that uh, some empathetic moments strike, you actually see that. You see connection here. rising, and you can see that there, and it sustains basically over the course of the rest of the clip. Great, let's take a look at another slide. Absolutely, so that's the good news, okay? So we're gonna look at oh. something not so good, and that's the exosuit, all right? But there's actually a bit of a good story here, too. We showed each of those clips twice. Okay. So take a look at what happens in the second view. Huh. 
lot more crazy activity happening, right? Because Why? people have that information. They've been told in the first segment, like, you know, bombarded with a bit of information. They don't really know, like, what to do with that until the end, where, it's, where they're told, you know, this could revolutionize deep sea diving. James Cameron owns only one of three that are available in the world. So people are left with that and they're like, oh, okay, like now the second viewing, they take that information with them and they and they can clue into some of the more important details earlier on. Interesting, okay, last slide. So this is the results of the poutine eating <laughs> contest, okay? So this is pretty interesting. How did this one do? Yeah, so this is cool. So this is ranked number three of the 25, okay? So just behind the polar bear cup, right? And you can see, you know, the opening obviously above level, above mean uh, levels of attention and connection. People are dialed into the poutine. Because it's, it's gross. <laughs> it's, well, it's a group of Canadians. They might have been hungry too, right? Eating starts to happen. And then you kind of see an interesting phenomena, right? So this is basically the brain's like gag reflex, right? So you see heightened levels of attention, connection, coding, and then it just drops like a pit when food's coming out of people's mouths. Right. right? People are totally grossed out. So there you have it, the spikes don't lie. Daily Planet excites the brain. Oh, and maybe we'll ease up on showing you regurgitation shots in the future. Thank awesome. you so very much. Thank you, Zai. And of course, thank you. It turned out the number one ranked content in that focus group was a Heritage Minute spot for Flanders Fields. Brain Insights also wants your participation in their year-long study, Understanding Canadian Identity at 150, so head to our Twitter feed for a link. But hold off on that for just a few more minutes. We've got some discoveries for you now, and these are good. Have a look at this, a 3D printed robot with soft inflatable legs, invented by a team from the University of California that managed to get this little thing to overcome a whole lot of crazy terrain. It can move over large rocks, small rocks, even sand. The legs are mounted on the robot in the shape of an X to allow it to move in multiple directions. Each leg is hollow, so it can be inflated to work in the size, shape, and stiffness necessary for particular tasks. For instance, it's able to squish itself down so it can crawl into tight spaces like a cat or a cockroach would. This is the current prototype, so it's still tethered to an air pump, but the researchers are hoping to miniaturize all that so it can walk off leash all on its own. You could take it to the park, right? Yeah. Anyway, wrap them up. It's time to play a game of pool robot style. Let's meet Judith, a pool playing robot by a California high school teacher named Ben Barville. His servo assisted robot shooter swings around the table so it can attack from all angles and probably kick your butt in the game. In order to give the robot its mobility, he designed a table that sits on a pedestal so the robot can swing around with enough space for it to be tucked away when it's not in use. But I mean, seriously, if you had one of these, when would it ever not be in use? He's currently working with a miniature version, but he hopes to join the Artist in Residence program at his local Maker Studio so he can build himself a life-size model and take his game to the next level. When we come back, we have this fantastic student-built race car right in the studio, and I'm going to get to drive it. No, you're not. And I'm not going to get to drive it. That's when we get back.